Why is she telling us to go to our room? She doesn't want you to be put in danger. Okay. But if you don't go, you'll have to stay here forever. We won't be able to do any more in the game. And I'll go. But I don't want to die. I don't want anyone to attack us. Well, we're going to have to fight more monsters if we go through. But if we stay here, then the game's over already. There's nothing else we can do. That conversation was the first moment when I realized that this video game we're playing might actually create the experience I was hoping for. You see, I have two daughters, Elena, who is the six-year-old you just heard having an existential crisis, and Lily, who is our eight-year-old. As they've gotten older, I've been getting anxious about what kind of future is waiting for them. So about a year ago, I thought, what can I do to help them build up traits that will navigate them through this increasingly complex world they're getting into? The problem is, the typical things you see parents do to connect with their kids, like camping or playing sports, none of those are really my thing. The only hobby I've had for my whole life was playing video games. So I thought, okay, I'll start doing one-on-one -on -one gaming sessions and we'll see how it goes. Well, very quickly, I noticed a common thing with both girls. They were always super excited to start playing, but the moment things became difficult, they wanted to give up. I don't know anything else I can do. That was a good try, to try to block something. And I get it. Difficult things are scary. Even as an adult, I often feel the same way. So I thought, let's do an experiment. Let's see if I can build their resilience through a kind of video game training. Develop it in a safe environment where the challenges are real, but the cost of failure is relatively low. This is a story of a little girl who was hoping to play a fun little game with her dad, only to get blindsided by the difficulty curve. But it's also a story of a father who was hoping his daughter wasn't going to give up, even when he wasn't sure whether she could succeed. This is Growing Through Gaming, a lesson in determination. Playing video games together is not a new thing for our family, but normally we either play games which are quite easy for the girls, or if we play a harder game, my wife and I take over when it becomes too difficult for them. In these one-on-one -on -one sessions, however, I tried to pick games that help one of them develop in a particular area. With Elena, I decided to play Undertale for a few different reasons. The first is that the game has a very straightforward story, which is quite easy for her to follow. This, as well as the cute art style, helped her to stay motivated to keep playing even when the difficulty started ramping up. I'll just go back up here because yeah. we're going to go to Asgore's castle. Second, the controls are relatively simple. Most puzzles and encounters only require the use of the directional keys and maybe one or two other keys. She really hadn't played any keyboard and mouse games up to this point, so I wanted to make sure that she wasn't going to get overwhelmed by the mechanics. Finally, the game's themes mirror the kind of experience I wanted to share with Elena. If you are familiar with Undertale, you know that being determined, not giving up when things get hard, is baked into almost every aspect of the game. From the more obvious examples, like the encouraging text that appears on Game Over screens, and the messages at every save point, to the more subtle inclusions, like the way some boss battles can be resolved peacefully if you keep selecting the same option, even if it's not obvious that you're making progress. The game gave me a lot of opportunities to talk with Elena about being determined, sharing examples from the story and dialogue about different character goals and obstacles, and how she was feeling about her own challenges when playing through the game. Should we take a break? Yeah. And for a six-year-old, this game can be brutal. Combat in Undertale is primarily made up of these bullet hell mini-games, which become increasingly faster and more elaborate as the game progresses. There are also puzzles which range in difficulty from baby mode to more serious brain teasers. 
For the most part, Elena handled the puzzles really well without spending too much time on any particular puzzle. With the combat, however, this really pushed her to her limits. But let's talk first about the story and the overall difficulty curve of the game. If you haven't played Undertale yet and you don't want to have the story spoiled for you, pause the video here, go play it now, and come back when you're done. Don't worry, I'll wait for you. Okay, are you done? Great, then let's continue. At the start of the game, the main character is dropped into the underground monster world. You are first met by Flowey, who introduces you into what seems like a friendly world of love and rainbows, only to pull the rug out by attempting to murder you and take your soul. Luckily, you are saved by Toriel, who proceeds to give you information about the ruins and kind of eases you into those first combat encounters. For Elena, even these first monsters were somewhat intimidating, leading to that moment from the beginning of the video. Well, we're gonna have to fight more monsters if we go through. In order to leave the ruins, you have to defeat Toriel. Elena had decided, basically right at the beginning, that she would try to resolve each encounter peacefully, which made the fight quite stressful for her until she realized that Toriel was not going to kill her. After getting past Toriel, you get to explore the rest of the underground. The game introduces several interesting characters. Ahem. Several interesting characters. Several. Sans, will you stop that? Anyway. There are puzzles to complete, lots of different monsters to fight, and you start to learn the history behind why the monsters are trapped in the underground and what it will take for them to escape. You also learn quickly that humans are considered dangerous, and many of the characters are tasked with capturing or killing humans that might stumble into the underground. While at first, many of them might seem dangerous, most of them end up being more like... Even Papyrus, who talks a big game about capturing a human, and is actually quite a difficult encounter, he doesn't kill you if he wins, and will eventually let you past him if you lose enough times. Elena was able to make her way through all of these early encounters at a pretty steady pace, losing a few times here and there, but not really enough to become very frustrated. That is, until she reached the Spear Maze. The Spear Maze is the first encounter with Undyne, a monster who is truly determined to see you fail. This challenge requires you to walk through a dark maze while dodging spears that appear in random tiles on the ground. If you get hit by a spear, you switch into a quick combat encounter where you have to dodge several spears flying at you at high speed. It represents a dramatic spike in difficulty compared to the rest of the game so far. This fits narratively as well because unlike the other characters you meet up to this point, she truly believes that killing you is the only way to free her people and is fully committed to that goal. For Elena, this challenge completely overwhelmed her. I don't know how to do, do it with her. I don't like her. The game was asking her to move with much greater precision and react much faster than she was capable. I'm trying, it's just that it's, it's too hard. To make it worse, there is no pausing or using any kind of healing items. She had to make it completely from the beginning to the end in one go without stopping. And again, the spears are random, so she can't even memorize a pattern to help her get through easier. Our first play session was an hour-long slaughter, with Elena dying over and over and over and over. She honestly didn't want to play again, but I promised her that if she didn't make it during the second play session, we would take a break from Undertale, play something else for a while, and come back to it when she was feeling more confident. The second session started off similar to the first session, but Elena started to make a little bit of progress. And a few times, she almost made it to the end. At about the 45 minute mark, 
I started to get nervous that she wasn't going to make it. But then. All right, get ready, get ready, get ready. Here we go. Try number 16, I think. No, 23. Daddy, lucky numbers are even numbers. Okay, we still got two hits left. Let's make it to the big room. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's make it. <gasps> One more dodge. What's happening? What's happening? I don't know, but we're getting to go across. Elena had made it. Before we do anything else, high five. We actually did it! Oh! I'm gonna tell mommy and daddy where I was taking home. I oh mean, my gosh. Wait, not mommy and that daddy. That was so cool. I mean, I'm gonna tell mom. If Elena had not succeeded, I would still have been proud of how she kept trying for so long, even though she had wanted to give up after the first couple of failures. And even after the spear maze, she never stopped trying, even though there were encounters which took longer and were even more difficult. What did change, however, was her confidence and attitude. And Daddy, I knew I was going to do it because with the spear maze, I only had to have two times and the second time I did it. And with the dummy, I only need to do it two times and the second time I did it. And even when things got difficult again, it was like we both kind of just knew that after that, she could get through any battle if she just kept trying. And we were right. Down. Left, right, up, up. Nice, we did it, we didn't even get hit. That's awesome. Elena, <laughs> we did it, we beat Undyne on the Yay! first try. Doing good, doing good, doing good. Well, we actually didn't take very much damage this time. I thought we were gonna take a lot more. You earned zero gold. <laughs> because it was kinda easy. What's Whoa! Just to obey me. You're supposed to do that. Stop, stop it. Stop! No, don't stop! When she had finished the final boss of the game, I asked her some questions about her experience playing through Undertale. Were there any parts when you just wanted to stop playing? Uh, yeah, all those tricky parts. I thought I was going to get stuck for the whole time. How come you kept doing it, even if you thought you were going to get stuck forever? Because you told me to. Okay, but we could have stopped playing the game. I didn't want to, like, not play any games with you, you know? But did you have fun playing it? Yeah. Do you like games that are a little bit hard sometimes? Yeah, because then it's like, um, takes time and then, like, and then we are, like, able to go on after. If we decided to play a new game and it got really, really hard, just like it did with some of the parts of Undertale, do you think you'd want to keep playing, or do you think that you would want to give up? Both like, first thing that I don't want to do it, then after when we're finished, I say that I do want to do it. Oh, because you like the feeling after you've done it. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. I don't believe that completing Undertale will be any kind of defining moment in her life. But I do think reinforcing these kinds of experiences, whether they come from video games or our real lives, they give us more and more memories that we can use to remind ourselves that we can succeed and that the feeling of success will make up for all of those moments of frustration. I will say there is a small part of me that hopes that when Elena is being challenged in her life at some point in the future and she feels like giving up, that she will remember. I'll just go back up here because yeah. we're going to go to Asgore's castle. That she will remember how when she was six, her dad made her play some silly and difficult computer game. And trying is just dirty. It's, it's too hard. It's only too hard because you haven't practiced. That she will remember how she didn't give up and how happy she was when she finished it. Actually did it. Oh! I'm gonna tell mommy and daddy where I was making help. That she'll remember and be filled with determination. Hey everyone, this is Nate. 
I'm here with... Who am I with? I'm <laughs> <laughs> here with Elena. And uh, we want to thank you guys for watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Elena and I sure had a lot of fun playing together. Only fun. Never stress. Um, if you did like the video, uh, please subscribe, like, comment below. Let us know uh, what kinds of things you want to see us do in the future. Planning to do a whole series uh, based on playing different games with the girls and different things that we're learning. Um, so next video will be with Lily. Uh, what happened to your crowd? So the next, the next video will be about Lily. Uh, if you want to see what game we're playing, you want to spoil it for yourself. Uh, we do play live on Twitch. The link is in the description. We'll see you guys in the next video. See you later. That's when you say see you later. See you later.